What's up everyone, it's Kenji here. In this video, I wanna share some tips and tricks to ace your Goldman Sachs higher view. So as a bit of background, I worked at Goldman Sachs myself as an investment banking summer analyst in New York City. So I had to go through the higher view probably just like you. So hopefully this is gonna be useful to you. So I split the video into five main parts. The first one has to do with the structure of the higher view. Then we'll look at the research that you should do ahead of this higher view interview. Thirdly, we'll look into the types of questions that you might get asked and I'll show you some examples. Then we'll have the 30 seconds of prep time and I'll explain what you should do during that time. And then lastly, we'll go over some of the answers, the types of answers that I would give that hopefully can be useful to you as well. So let's get into the details. All right, so let's get into a structure and I wanna give you some context as to where the higher view fits in. So firstly, to recruit for Goldman Sachs, you need to send an online application. The second step is the higher view. Then you would have a super day or assessment day, which is basically a final round interview. And then lastly, if you're successful, you're going to get an offer. That's typically the case for internship roles as well as full-time junior roles, right? So basically, you can think of the higher view as a first round interview. And what it actually consists of, it's just a video interview in which you get a set of pre-recorded questions that you're going to have to answer at your own time. So it's more or less usually around three to six questions for Goldman Sachs and you get about 30 seconds to prepare before each question. So you will get the question, you'll have 30 seconds to prep, and then you're gonna get about two minutes to answer the question. Now, you only get one try, so you really don't wanna mess that up, and you can't pause it, you can't do anything like that, and if you go over the two minute mark, the video is just going to shut off. Before the interview starts, you do get a couple of practice rounds that you might want to use uh, just to get yourself comfortable with talking with the camera, which is, isn't necessarily the most uh, comfortable thing for most people out there, right? As for how popular the higher views are, they're actually widespread across investment banking. Um, I've had to do some for JP Morgan, Bank of America, many other investment banks. Sometimes they may vary in terms of, instead of being three to six questions, it might be six to eight, it might be a bit longer, a bit shorter, but the overall theme is still very much the same. As for the science behind the higher view, you might have heard that they use artificial intelligence in this. So basically they try to detect things like how good your eye contact is, whether you feel nervous, whether you're confident, and so on and so forth. And basically when they're reviewing it, it's usually an analyst from what I've seen, usually an analyst in the division you're applying to is going to look at the higher view. And he's basically go going to get a bit of support from higher view in that it might say like this person's confident or this person's nervous and so on and so forth. And that's basically gonna give you a score. And based on that, they're going to assess how good you are as a candidate. I know it's a bit disturbing that there's a algorithm essentially analyzing you, but try not to think about it and just do it as if you would do say any other Zoom interview, for instance. In terms of preparation, ideally you should do about half an hour of research before you do the higher view. And here you wanna look at things such as getting to understand the role really well, understanding what you're exactly applying to. The second one would be understanding your motivations and having a good storyline for that. And then thirdly, I look at some recent financial news as in higher views, that's a common question as to, hey, tell me about some recent financial news that Goldman Sachs has been involved in or something along those lines. Now, as for where to do the research, I personally recommend the Wall Street Journal if you're in the US and the Financial Times if you're anywhere else. And both of them kind of cover the whole finance circles fairly well and they can give you good storylines basically. Also in the pre-interview stage is where you wanna get comfortable with the camera. So you might want to try to talk to it a bit, um, make sure that your eye contact is there because if you talk like this, you can see it doesn't impact as well as talking like this where I'm actually looking at you. There's a lot more passion to it. Make sure your hand gestures are there and other things like that. So that's where you wanna try to get comfortable if you can. As for the dress code, just dress the same as you would in an in-person interview, right? I personally went for a suit and tie, that just, it's just a safe bet really, but some people decide to just go with a shirt and that probably works as well. So that's the pre-interview prep and now let's jump into the questions. So for the most part, in higher views, the questions are more behavioral as opposed to technical. So if you don't know the difference, a behavioral question basically doesn't require any previous knowledge and is more about your behavior really. So for instance, the questions could be things along the lines of, Tell me about a time when you overcame a difficulty or tell me about a time where you had a great achievement, something along these lines, which doesn't really require previous knowledge, right? While say technical question typically does require some knowledge of finance and accounting. So it might be something like, what is the cost of equity or link the three financial statements for me and things like that, that obviously you need some background knowledge or else you're not gonna be able to answer. But for the higher view, you typically don't have to worry so much about that as they're mainly behavioral. That said, depending on the bank, at Goldman Sachs at least, they're mainly behavioral, but some other banks do try to put some technical questions in there, so keep that in mind. 
And here's a list of some common questions that they ask and feel free to take a screenshot and pause the video if you want. In my experience, the questions that I had were mainly behavioral and some other questions that I got was why this particular company and why this division, for instance, as well as I also got some ethics ones, which was something along the lines of you've been given confidential information, your boss wants to know about it, is it okay for you to share it? Or something along those lines and we'll get into how I actually answered them in the next section. All right, so the 30 second prep, and as I mentioned earlier, as soon as you get the question up, the time's gonna start ticking. So you really wanna have a pen and paper ready just to jot down a couple of thoughts you might have. Uh, ideally have a bit of a structure to it, and I'll show you how I did that here. So for most questions, I used what's called a STAR method, which stands for situation, task, action, and result. And overall, it gave a really good structure to the higher view, right? The last thing you want is to be forgetting things and going like, oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention that this thing was here and other things like that, you want to have a good structure that's going to be a lot more impressive, right? So during those 30 seconds, I would essentially have the paper and write the star down and I'll put one thing for each, right? All right, so let me show you an example of how I went about it. Suppose the question is something like, tell me about a time when you missed an important deadline. This is quite a common question, by the way, so keep that in mind. And so I'm just going to use a previous example of some work experience that I had working as a bellman and I'm going to use that and apply it to the question. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna use the star method and the, in the situation, I would write something like Bellman working at a hotel, because that was my internship experience. Then for the task, I might say like, tasked with giving a birthday decoration to girl's room, something like that. Then next up for the action, I might say something like, buy the decoration and put it in the room. And lastly, the result, I might say that I missed the deadline and I might write a couple reasons why and some takeaways, something like that. And in the next section, we'll talk about how I actually went about answering it. But overall, I personally don't really recommend going on the internet and trying to type something quick as you're probably gonna get even more stressed because you won't be able to find a quick answer. And also for behavioral questions, there's not really a right or wrong, right? You really just wanna try to structure it well and give a clear answer. That's all they're really looking for. Obviously, there's no right or wrong experience, yeah? All right, so for the answer, as I mentioned earlier, you got two minutes for this. And ideally, you wanna keep three things in mind. The first one has to do with eye contact, right? Making sure you're looking at the camera. The second one has to do with having some sort of a hand gesture or a face gesture. If you're like this the whole time, it just sounds a bit dull and you might not necessarily seem like you want the job, right? So you wanna to try to be a bit more energetic. And then the third one has to do with having a clear structure, right? If you have a couple of things jotted down on your paper, then that's obviously helpful, right? So let me show you how I would answer the tell me about a time when you missed the deadline question. So here it goes. The situation was that I was working as a bellman at a Marriott hotel about two summers ago and I was given the task to basically decorate a room for a guest whose daughter, a small child, was uh, having a birthday. So they wanted a bit of a cake, they wanted some decoration and things like balloons and other things like that. So basically I had two main actions that I had to take. The first one was to contact the finance team to see what kind of a budget I would have. And the second one had to do with actually buying the goods. So going to a website and buying these goods. And the delivery day that I got was one day prior to the actual um, guest arrival time. So that would give me a bit of a margin to prepare the room and so on. Unfortunately, I missed the deadline because the guests came and the goods just weren't there. They had actually been delayed by a day. So I was hoping that while the guests would come, I'd be able to go up to the room and, and get the decoration ready, but they were already there. So I decided to take some quick action and leave them at the lobby and let them know, gave them a drink and let them know that the room wasn't quite ready yet. So I went up to a room, uh, the decoration just arrived on time, so I went up quickly and got it all ready and let them know that it was now ready. And overall, the in the experience, although I did miss the deadline, um, I think we took some quick action as a team and we managed to have good customer service, which is what we were looking for as a hotel. And some takeaways for me there were, one, uh, to communicate more clearly, let them know that this is urgent. And then secondly, to, to check up, right, to make sure that it's ready, so call them every one or two days to know that things are on track or whether they're not, right? So something like that could be the answer. And I would say that it doesn't really matter if you don't cover the two minutes. The one thing you don't want is to go past the two minutes, right? You don't want your point to be cut halfway through, but you can very easily at one minute mark say, say that's enough. If you have your answer ready, then you have it ready, right? You don't really need to drag on. 
Also, as you saw here, the example I made has nothing to do with finance, right? It basically just answer the question. In an ideal world, maybe I would make it somewhat more finance related. But that said, I realize probably many of you don't have finance experience. So you can just use something like this, whether it be at a restaurant or somewhere else, or maybe even a university that might be relatable too. As for how long it's gonna take for Goldman to get back to you, from what I've heard, the typical range is around one week to one month, but that's really an approximation and don't get too fixated on that. Now I imagine most of you are preparing for a higher view yourself, so best of luck if you decide to do so, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.